Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. You can find all the work that I do under Robin underscore Norgren on Instagram or on my website at www.josiesartschool.com. I'd like to start with a poem by Mary Oliver called Softest of Mornings. Softest of Mornings. Hello. And what will you do today, I wonder, to my heart? And how much honey can the heart stand, I wonder, before it must break? This is trivial or nothing. A snail climbing a trellis of leaves and the blue trumpets of its flowers. No doubt, Clocks are ticking loudly all over the world. I don't hear them. The snail's pale horns extend and wave this way and that as her finger body shuffles forward, leaving behind the silvery path of her slime. O softest of mornings, how shall I break this? How shall I move away from the snail and the flowers? How shall I go on with my introspective and ambitious life? From the book The Right to Write by Julia Cameron. I am sitting at a small pine table facing east toward the Shangra to Cristo foothills. My view has a horse tank that needs filling, a white fence with a small robin's egg blue gate, a bird bath and terracotta with some of its figurines knocked off, a bright yellow garden hose I will use to fill the horse tank and the bird path, an overgrown garden plot a bucket lying on its side, my small dog Maxwell soaking in the early spring sunlight like an optimistic sunbather on a chilly beach day. When it warms up and that yellow hose has thawed out, I will fill the horse tank. When I warm up, I will tell you what I know about letting yourself write. This is the first trick, the one I am practicing now. It's to start where you are. It's a luxury to be in the mood to write. It's a blessing, but it's not a necessity. Writing is like breathing. It's possible to learn to do it well, but the point is to do it no matter what. Writing is like breathing. I believe that. I believe we all come into life as writers, We are born with a gift of language, and it comes to us within months as we begin to name our world. We all have a sense of ownership, a sense of satisfaction, as we name the objects that we find. Words give us power. As toddlers, first we grab, and then we grab with words. Every word we learn is an acquisition a bit of gold that makes us richer. We catch a new word and say it over and over, turning it like a rich nugget in the light. As children, we hoard and gloat over words. Words give ownership. We name our world and we claim it. As children, we learn new words at an astonishing clip. Words give us leverage. Me go with mommy, or mommy stay. Children are specific and direct. They don't beat around the bush. Their words are personal and powerful. They are filled with will and intent. They are filled with passion and purpose. Children trust the power of words. If words give us power, when do we start to lose our power over words? 
When do we start to feel that some of us are good at language and even have a short a shot at being writers, while the rest of us just happen to use it and don't dare consider ourselves in that league? My guess is that for most of us, school is where the sorting starts to happen. School is where we are told, you're good with words. The neat teacherly scrawl diagonally written across the top right-hand corner of the top page of, say, a geography report on Scandinavia. Well written. Well written. What does that mean? In school, it usually means clear, orderly thinking. Need enough grammar. Lots of orderly facts. It may also mean things we are taught like topic sentences and transitions. Very often it does not mean words that sing off the page, innovative word combinations, paragraphs of great free associations and digressions, all the gifts a young poet or novelist must have and want to use but not find useful under the scholarly dis- discipline of an academic paper. What happens when writing of that kind shows up in school papers? Too frequently, it's another margin quote, this time negative. You stray from the topic a bit here, or stick to the point. It's a rare teacher who takes the time and care to praise the kind of writing that doesn't fit into an academic paradigm. It's as though scholar is it's as though scholastically we're on a pretty strict diet. Not so much pepper here. Not so much pepper. Not so much bunk. Not so much humanity, please. Academically, we are inclined to a rather pedestrian prose denuded of personality and passion. Perhaps even a bit elevated in tone, as if writing is something to be done only from the loftiest of motives a kind of distillant of rationalism trickled onto the page. In countries and situations where writing is forbidden, it takes on primacy. In prisons, people scratch their messages into stone, onto dirt. On desert islands, messages are shoved into bottles and set to sea. When communication is made to seem actively impossible, the human will will communicate to communicate will rear its head and people willingly risk death and dismemberment to do it this is healthy this is from my book deepen the way you live your life Good patterns are flowing through your life. I choose to rise up out of that storm and see that in moments of desperation, fear, and helplessness, each of us can be a rainbow of hope, doing what we can to extend ourselves in kindness and grace to one another. And I know for sure that there is no them. There's only us. Oprah Winfrey. Life moves in cycles, patterns. Each one of us, is, if we are paying attention, can see these patterns that make up the essence of who we are. We are more attuned to seeing it in others. Yes, the weaknesses, the missteps, history repeating itself. Today, let's focus on the good cycles, patterns, tendencies. Talk to someone dear to you and ask her to share with you the good cycles, the good patterns the good tendencies she sees in your life.